Hi, it's Doc Williams, and today we're going to talk about valence electrons and how to use the periodic table to determine them. Valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level of an atom. And the number of valence electrons in an atom can tell us a lot about that atom's chemical properties. All atoms in the same group will have the same number of valence electrons. If we look at the Bohr's model of lithium, we see that there is one valence electron on the outermost shell and there's two energy levels. The two energy levels correspond to period two, but the one valence electron is because it is in group one. And if we look at sodium, we see that sodium is in period three. It has three energy levels, but still because it's in group one, it has one valence electron. Now let's compare sodium to magnesium. Sodium is a group one element in period three. It has one valence electron and three energy levels. We have the one valence electron here, one, two, three energy levels. But look at magnesium. Magnesium is next to sodium and it's in group two. So this means that magnesium will have two valence electrons in its outermost energy level, but because it's in group three, it still has one, two, three energy levels. So for elements in the same group, the only thing that changes as you move down in terms of um, valence electrons is the level or energy level that the valence electrons are found on. As a quick review for groups one and two, pause the video, then determine the number of valence electrons for beryllium, potassium, and barium. Beryllium is in group two, so it has two valence electrons. I'm going to write VE to indicate valence electrons. Potassium in group one has one valence electron, and barium in group two has two valence electrons. This method we cannot use for our transition metals, only with our main group, but we can use it for groups, for most of the elements in group 13 through 18. But there's a little bit of a twist. Let's take chlorine, for example. With the Bohr's model, we see that the outermost energy level has seven valence electrons, two, four, six, seven. But chlorine is in group 17. In this case, what you would do is that we look at the last number of the group number for groups 13 through seven. So in this case, all elements in group 17 has seven valence electrons. If we look at oxygen, oxygen is in group 16. And if you count the number of valence electrons in the Bohr's model, we see that we have six. So basically what you're doing for groups 13 through 18 is you're subtracting 10 from the group number in order to get the number of valence electrons. Let's practice. Determine the number of valence electrons for fluorine, carbon, and phosphorus. Fluorine is in group 17, so it will have seven valence electrons. Carbon is in group 14, and looking at the last digit in the group number, it will have four valence electrons. And phosphorus is in group 15, looking at the last um, digit in this group number, it will have five valence electrons. Determine the number of valence electrons for each of the following. Hydrogen, neon, calcium, helium, and rubidium. Hydrogen is in group one, so it will have one valence electron. Neon, is in group 18, giving it eight valence electrons. Calcium, group two, we will use the same as the group number, 
in this case, and it has two valence electrons, helium is a little different. Although helium is in group 18, it's in period one, which means it only has one energy level. It can have at most two valence electrons, which gives it a full set. Rubidium is in group one, giving it one valence electron. In summary, groups one and two have the same number of valence electrons as their group number. And elements in groups 13 through 18 has the same number of valence electrons as the last number in the group number. So um, elements in group 17 will have seven valence electrons. Elements in groups 13 will have three valence electrons. We skip groups 13 through 12 because they follow different rules. I hope this helped in understanding valence electrons and how to use a periodic table to determine them.